What did Beyonce, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, Cristiano Ronaldo, and me all have in common? We all choose to rent where we live. Nobody can seem to understand why I do this. And it's hardly surprising. I mean, what do you always hear? Renting is throwing money away. You're just paying off someone else's mortgage. But there's much more to it than that. Now, I'm not saying that you should sell up and join me in the world of renting. Most people probably shouldn't. And I'm not saying that renting is perfect. It's far from it, and I'll talk about that later. But I want to give you another perspective, because everyone talks about owning as if it's just, by default, the best choice for everyone. And that is just not true. By the end of this video, you'll be able to make whatever is genuinely the best decision for you, rather than just accepting conventional wisdom at face value. Every time I see a conversation online about renting versus buying, immediately it becomes spreadsheet wars. People go deep into the numbers and argue about the assumptions that they've used and try so hard to rationally convince each other that such and such a way is the best financial decision. For me, though, that's completely missing the point. There's nothing more important than being happy in your own home. And that should be the primary factor. Yet the financial stuff is important, but that's got to be a distant second. Ultimately, it comes down to the flexibility of renting versus the security of owning. And for me, the flexibility is the clear winner. And there are three reasons for that. The first is that I can move as often as I want without incurring any costs. So I've lived in lots of different countries, but even just within London, I've lived in various parts of town just to try different things out. And it costs me nothing to do that. Whereas if you own a home, you're pretty stuck. Any decision you make about moving is one you have to take very, very seriously. The second is I can scale up or down where I live as needed. So my wife and I lived in a one bedroom flat for years. Then we had a child, so we moved into a two bedroom flat. Then we had another child and we moved into a three bedroom flat. Maybe we'll have another child, have another child, but maybe we will and we'll move again. But you don't have this whole thing of having your first home or one of your first homes being your forever home. And then you always have to make that one home fit your needs. That has never made any sense for me. I far prefer being able to go, okay, well, these are my circumstances right now and I can choose where I live based on those circumstances. And if things change, that's fine too. And the third is I can flex my housing expenses up and down with my income. So as time's gone on and I've earned more, we've been able to upgrade where we live. But if things got a bit tough and I wasn't earning so much, then we could just scale it back down again and we wouldn't have the stress of a mortgage payment that wasn't affordable anymore or having to take a huge financial hit to sell a home to move somewhere smaller. If you own your home, you just don't have this flexibility for two reasons. One is cost. So if you're buying a £500,000 home, that's a £12,500 stamp duty bill before we even get into any of the other costs. And the other is just the hassle. Moving is an absolute nightmare. And part of the reason I'm convinced that people don't move more often is it's so painful. So between deciding that you want or need to move and actually doing it could easily take a year. There's one other advantage that I love, and that is that maintenance isn't my problem. And sure, sometimes you have to ask a few times for something to get done, and that can be annoying, but less annoying than doing it myself. And when I hear about people's weekend projects, fixing things or whatever, it just makes me shudder. And even more so when people decide they need extra space or they want to do their house up. And so they get into this huge refurb project and they end up living on a building site for months. I'd rather just move if I wanted to live somewhere different. Of course, there are downsides that I'll talk about later. And this is just me. Your priorities might be completely different. That's why I'd never want to convince anyone that renting is what you should do. But I'm trying to just get a bit of balance back because often I don't think you hear any arguments in favour of renting. So personally, spreadsheets are irrelevant. Even if you could show me with absolute certainty that I'd be better off owning, I still wouldn't do it. But let's get into the financials because there as well, things are a little less black and white than they're often presented as. Something you always hear about renting is it's throwing money away. I just don't buy that because what that misses is that you've always got a housing cost, always, even after you paid off your mortgage. You do have the interest on your mortgage, but then you've also got maintenance and upkeep. You've got your bills, you've got council tax, there might be a service charge. So you're always gonna have those costs. And even being mortgage free isn't as great as it sounds because there's an opportunity cost, which I'll talk about more in a minute. So yes, with my rent, I'm paying out money this month and I'll have nothing to show for it next month. But exactly the same is true if you own your home, except for that part of your mortgage cost that represents the capital that you're paying off. But if you do want to play the maths game, then depending on where you live, renting can be a far better deal. 
For example, at the moment, I choose to live in a pretty expensive flat in a pretty expensive area. That's where I want to live, but I would never want to own this flat as an investment. It would be a terrible investment. ROI would be shocking. And yes, my rent is expensive, but I know how much the flat is worth. And I've worked out that if I put down a 10% deposit and got a mortgage for the rest, then just the interest on that mortgage, if you assumed an interest rate of 4%, just the interest would be more than the rent I'm paying before getting into capital repayments, service charge, which is very expensive, and all the rest of it. I'm not saying this is always the case. It's not. It tends to be the case mostly for expensive properties in expensive areas. But my point is it's not as cut and dried as it's often made out to be, especially when you start factoring in something else, which almost never gets spoken about. I mentioned that even after you paid off your mortgage, your home is still costing you something. And that is the opportunity cost of the cash you've got tied up in your home. Say you live in a £1 million home, which you've paid off completely, no mortgage. Well, that's great, but it's not costing you nothing. It's costing you something because you've got a million pounds tied up in that property that you can't invest in anything else. And that is opportunity cost. I very rarely see anyone talk about. I said that for where I choose to live right now, I'm better off renting than owning. But in fact, the numbers are even more in my favor because if I owned, I'd have a six figure sum tied up in the property. But instead, I have that same six-figure sum invested in something else, which is earning me a return. And this actually brings me to a critical part of making this work. You're probably screaming at your screen by now, so let me put you out of your misery. I know what you're thinking. Your home is an asset that goes up in value. So when I talk about that hypothetical million pound home, you probably didn't pay a million pounds for it. Maybe you only paid half of that and the other half came to you effectively for free because of something we've talked about so many times on this channel. Property prices tend to go up over the long term. Does that invalidate my argument? Absolutely not. It just introduces a really important caveat. You have to invest in something. I've said that the home I choose to live in is a bad investment, so I choose not to invest in it. Instead, I take the amount that I would have invested it and invest it in other properties instead. So I'm still getting all the benefit of house prices going up, it just happens to not be the home that I live in. I can even choose to invest in areas where I believe capital growth prospects are stronger than where I want to live. So I'm actually reaping more of the benefit of house prices going up than I would have done if I owned my home. This point is so, so important. This whole arrangement works for me because I've got cash that I could invest in my own home, but I choose to invest it in other assets instead. Owning assets is far better than not owning assets. So renting by choice is worlds away from renting because you can't afford the deposit on your own place. I'm not arguing that a renter with no assets is in just as good a position as someone who owns their home. That's just not true. My point is you need to have assets. You just don't have to live in your assets. Of course, there are trade-offs in everything. And my renting situation obviously isn't perfect. In fact, there are two major downsides. I'll go to the most important one second. But first, I've got to acknowledge that owning your home is massively more tax efficient. For a start, your capital gains are tax-free, which is massive. But also, as an investor, I'm getting taxed on the income that my rental properties are producing before I can then use that income to pay my own living costs. Whereas if you own your home, that's just not a factor. For that reason, if I live long enough, the decision to rent rather than own will cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds in extra tax over my lifetime, which is bad, but it's literally a price I'm willing to pay. But there's an even bigger drawback than that which is that renting, in many ways, is a horrible experience. I'm not going to moan about the unpleasantness of finding a property to rent, because finding a property to live in is just as bad too. And I'm not even going to moan about rent increases, because, you know, it's a market. And if you own your home with a mortgage, then your housing costs can go up unpredictably as well. But the real killer is uncertainty. I love where I live, I don't want to move. But every year, round about February, there's a possibility that I might have to move out with two months notice if the owner decides that they want to move in or sell or whatever. And I know in many ways, this is just the flip side of flexibility. So maybe I shouldn't be moaning about it, but I do find it pretty unpleasant. So I can only imagine what it must be like for someone who would find it hard to pay the moving costs or who would struggle to save up to put another deposit down before they get their previous one back. And because I'm living both sides of this, I actually support measures that most other landlords think are just horrendous, like longer notice periods to get your property back. And so for that reason, I think it actually makes me a better investor because I do rent. 
But for me, this last reason completely sums up why renting v owning has to be an emotional decision rather than anything else. If you value flexibility more than security, you want to be renting. If you value security more than flexibility, you've got to be owning. And that's why I'm not trying to change your mind with any of it. I'm not telling you that you're doing the wrong thing and you can't tell me that I'm doing the wrong thing. You've got to make your own personal decision. But I hope in this video, I've highlighted some factors that you may not have thought about that will allow you to make a better and more considered decision. But whether you own your home or not, if you own any kind of property, it can be seriously stressful and end up taking up loads of your time. And that's a journey that I've been on and eventually got away from. So watch this video next where I share the five steps that I took to stop having to stress about my investments.